Hi everyone, I'm called Mike Gibson and this is the program Capital Ideas Life. Today we are going to tell you about one of the main attractions of the Russian capital. I think every tourist that comes to Moscow should visit this place. So today we're going to take a look around the famous Nikulin Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard. Today on the program, how acrobats and tightrope walkers train. A lethal number. Our program host joins some white tigers in a cage. And the most spectacular circus performance of the Russian capital. Russian circus art is considered one of the very best in the world. This is evident from the fact that virtually every famous circus in both hemispheres is bound to have Russian acrobats, jugglers or horse riders. Every year, Russian artists win top prizes at various international circus festivals held in France, Germany and Italy. Today in Russia, one of the strongest troops is assembled in Moscow's oldest circus, the Nikulin Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard. The lobby is empty for now because we've come at the beginning of the working day. We have the opportunity to see the training areas, the dressing rooms and backstage and to see how the circus performers work. And maybe I can come up with an act of my own. The working week at Svetnoy Boulevard Circus is split in half. The first half is rehearsals. As a rule, they are held from Tuesday to Thursday. There are performances on Fridays and weekends. Some days, the circus can host up to three performances a day. The secret of the perfect circus act is constant training. Several troops at the circus rehearse their acts every day. It's done like this so that everything is perfect and ready for the performance. Now, we're going to watch the aerial gymnasts rehearsing. This number is called the Cross Air Flight. Perhaps technically it is the most difficult in the whole performance. It requires special preparation of the hall, tightening the safety net, securing the ropes, trapeze and safety harness. During the intermission, the gymnasts manage to do it on their own in just five minutes. Now we have prepared a new version of our number for the new program at the Nikulin Circus, a cross-air flight. It's a long-forgotten, let's say, version from the Soviet Union. We have to calculate the timing perfectly to get it. The catcher who catches it has to be aware and calculate the time. That is, we have to be in sync. And we have to work as a team. Could I try it myself? Sure, we can try. Yeah, great, thanks. It is forbidden to climb up even the safety net without proper safety in place. The aerial gymnasts fly under the actual dome of the circus at a height of about 20 meters. Stanislav Bogdanov's troop performs not only in Moscow, they have toured almost the whole world with their program. While the aerial gymnasts dismantled the main arena to prepare for the next performers, we looked into the rehearsal rooms where Elisa Kachatrian the world-famous tightrope walker is practicing her stunts. Now she exclusively performs stunts wearing ballet pointe shoes, walking on a rope stretched 13 meters high. It's very important to have inner peace of mind, emotional peace, get a good night's sleep, and to be ready. Because if you're not calm inside, it really affects your balance. So it's important to be balanced and calm on the inside. The Nikulin Circus program includes another solo performance by another aerial gymnast, Veronika Teslenko. Unlike her colleagues, she always performs without a safety net. Now Veronika has won several prizes at international festivals and has worked at the famous Canadian Cirque du Soleil. I'm an aerial straps gymnast. Usually, men work in this particular genre showing off their incredible strength, doing incredible hangs, winding up on the straps. I don't do all that because I'm a woman and I prefer to bring beauty to the world rather than strength. So my routine is a little different, mostly beautiful flying and breakaway elements. When I am hanging from a position, by one leg, by one slipper. What is the most interesting part for you? 
The moment we entered the arena is the most exciting, the most long-awaited. It is what we've been rehearsing for so long. We've put in our energy, our health, our time, all our love. According to a tradition that dates back to the last century, circus art in Russia is passed down from generation to generation. Now there are several circus dynasties at the Nikulin Circus. For example, Veronica's husband Alexander is a second-hand generation juggler. During his wife's performance, he is responsible for the technical components of the number. He monitors the ropes and their height. He also participates in other numbers with the families of his brothers and sisters. We juggle three props, rings, pins and hoops. There are eight of us in the number. These three are my brothers and sister, our spouses and our older children. Rehearsals for a circus performer are the basis of the successful and safe execution of all stunts during a performance. Each performer has only one hour in the main arena to thoroughly rehearse his or her act. This is especially important for group acts where several performers are involved at once. Stand still. Control it. When an acrobat is ready to perform a stunt, he signals to the other members of the act. This can be a clap or an up command that circus performers around the world understand. The shows currently running on the stage of the Nikulin Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard involves several troops with different acrobatic numbers. Not only graduates of circus schools, but also professional athletes perform in these numbers. Acrobatics is, shall we say, the fundamental form of circus art. Acrobatics is also the starting point for aerial gymnastics and competitive gymnasts. This is the beginning of beginnings. Our number consists of two parts. We have an inflatable track, it's like an inflatable mattress that we jump on. And the second part is a double mini trampoline that we bounce on. We have people from different sports in our number. The girl we have is a gymnast. The blonde guy is Pasha Kurkin. He's a diver. We have acrobats, they jump on the track. There's Pasha Kurkin. One of the most spectacular acts at the Nikulin Circus is the performance of Predators. As soon as a protective screen appears in the arena, before the tigers or lions even appear, the fear of many spectators is apparent. Today, our crew will try to overcome their fear and meet the white tigers of Svetnoy Boulevard Circus face to face. Can they sense it? On a subconscious level, of course. And what do they understand? For them, it's a weakness. If you're producing adrenaline, then you... So it's fear? Yes, it's fear. And any victim releases adrenaline and experiences fear and some kind of vibration. So I'm supposed to be calm? Yeah, like last time, that's all. Well, shall we go? Come on in. What are the basic rules of working with a predator? Lots of rules. Lots of them. You don't have to be a hero, first and foremost. You have to be calm, balanced, and monitor the situation. Everything. Eyes, ears, sound. Any movement of the predator, you have to monitor and watch how he behaves. Tigers, like other circus animals, are accustomed from childhood to loud music and spotlights. All this becomes a normal environment for them and does not affect their behavior. Also, from the first months of their lives, the predators are accustomed to humans and the trainer develops a rapport. He is the alpha male here and everyone must obey him without question. And how do they sense fear? Yes, yes, a certain adrenaline. Come over here. He's really looking at me. He's looking normally, just getting the sense of you. Yes, it's okay? Okay, good. Is it okay to look at his face? You can, just don't challenge them to a fight. 
Each tiger has its own personality, so a trainer must treat each one differently. Some of them can be touched on the ear or whiskers or even be hugged, but some don't like it. At the same time, according to the trainers, one should always maintain one's vigilance when communicating with predators. Trust should not be blind, as with tigers, so with people. That's what Sergei says. Whatever adrenaline you have, if you're not running around here screaming and stuff, then they won't be interested in you like, oh, a new toy. They're fed, they're calm, you'll be more of a toy to them than a prey. They don't prey, they don't know how to do it. I put a chicken in here once, he didn't know what to do with it. He sat in one corner, she sat in the other corner, and neither one ate the other. A tiger weighs about 200 kilograms. Keeping these big cats costs the Svetnoy Boulevard Circus between $8,000 and $10,000 a month. We're back in the circus. By the way, this place looks the same as it did 140 years ago. During the restoration, they tried not to change its appearance, and even the columns remain in their places. The Moscow Nikulin Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard has European roots. It was founded by Albert Salomonsky, an Italian hereditary circus artist, and built by the Austrian architect August Weber in 1880. For more than a hundred years, however, the building had fallen into disrepair and could no longer hold the equipment necessary for modern performances. In 1985, the last performance was held in the old circus building. During the reconstruction, the size of the additional rooms was increased several times. A rehearsal space was built, the foyer was renovated, and the height of the dome was increased to 25 meters. At the same time, the historical facade and even some of the furniture were preserved. Four years later, the circus reopened at the same address. My dear guests, the circus is up and running, and you are its first spectators. I congratulate you. The famous Soviet actor Yuri Nikulin devoted nearly 50 years of his life to the circus. Here he worked as an assistant to the famous Soviet clown Karandash. Then, for many years, he performed in the arena with another clown, Mikhail Shudin. It was one of the most famous clown couples of the Soviet circus. Many of their routines are still in the program. In 1982, Yuri Nikulin became the director of his home circus and its artistic director. Fourteen years later, the building at 13 Svetnoy Boulevard became known as Nikulin Circus. Yes, on the day of the performance, there are lots of people here. It looks like a full house. They say you go to the circus three times as a child with your parents, then with your children, and then with your grandchildren. Recently, this trend is changing, and the circus is becoming more and more popular among young people, although families with children still make up the majority of the audience. I've been going to the circus for a long time, even before Nika was born. And Nika is going to the big circus for the first time today. Veronica really wants to see the tigers. All the way there, she kept saying she wanted to see them, and the clowns. I think it's going to be a really cool show. Today, the circus is hosting Nearly Serious, a show dedicated to Yuri Nikulin's 100th birthday. Throughout the show, the audience is introduced to different stages of the great artist's life. The performance begins with a recollection of his first trip to the circus with his grandfather. At that time, Yuri Nikulin was only five years old. We have a big circus block at the beginning of the program called the Circus of My Childhood, where everything is exaggerated. 
everything is big, everything is overblown. Because he wrote that, back then, I felt that the trees were massive, and there were 10 elephants, maybe 15. But I really understood that there was only one, maybe two elephants. Then he wrote about the war and his war years. We have an act devoted to that theme. Then he wanted to be an actor, but no one would admit him to an acting school. They said he wasn't good enough. One day, he read an ad in a newspaper about a clown studio at the Moscow Circus under the order of Lenin on Svetnoy Boulevard. And that's how this address appeared in my life, 13 Svetnoy Boulevard. We have a routine dedicated to it, 13 Svetnoy Boulevard. So today we visit one of the most amazing places in Moscow, the legendary Nikulin Circus on Svetnoy Boulevard. And with our own eyes, we saw that this brilliant circus show is constant hard work every day. And it's all done so that the audience has a fun and interesting time. So come to the circus and enjoy. You've been watching the program Capital Ideas Life, and I'm Mike Gibson. See you next time. A Big Asia LTD production. This program was produced with the support of the Department for External Economic and International Relations of the Moscow government.